Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay, so we're you know easing into this world of carbon meals. I'm sure you probably, you know, we've talked about reactions together on how to do acetal formation, right? And that, you know, we were dealing with oxygens, you know, whether like they were alcohols adding to carbonyls, whether it was two alcohols adding to a carbonyl, or one alcohol, a diol adding to the same carbonyl to give us something going from something like this to something like this, right? We've done that before, it involved protonation, attack, a proton shuffle, and then another attack, and then, you know, the kicking off of water. Well, in this video, luckily everything we've done with acetal formation directly applies with about, you know, a little bit of difference. I'm saying like 97% of what we've done before directly applies. And then we're gonna, you know, learn 3% extra stuff that's a little, you know, different, a little bit more specific to sulfur and why it differs in this reaction. So if, you know, you ask me, it's 3% more fun. Okay, so what I wanna do in this video first is we have this reaction right here. We're going from a ketone, and you know I got, I you know, you all know I like to just pick a very generic carbonyl whenever I do these uh, reactions. I always just start with acetone. So what I wanna do is just start with acetone, see what happens when I take this sulfur analog, this uh, disulfide, you know, we throw in some zinc chloride, some acid, and then we get this thioacetal at the end. So I wanna step through the mechanism, and then after we do that, I wanna show you guys how to undo a thioacetal, and then I wanna talk about why thioacetals are important. Why would we reach for something like this when we already know how to get an acetal? And the, the, you know, what we're gonna see is that it gives you a little bit of flexibility, and um, when you're doing like a synthesis problem, and it helps you kind of get around certain situations and it makes your life easier. So I hope by the end of this, you're thinking, you know, thioacetals are pretty cool. At least I think so. Okay, so in this reaction, unfortunately, like I've been <laughs> drilling into you and I'm sure like how you've been trained, the first step is unfortunately to not protonate the carbonyl carbon, or sorry, yeah, the carbonyl oxygen, rather. The very first thing is that this oxygen Usually we would protonate it to make this carbonyl carbon more reactive, kind of activate the carbonyl. But we have this zinc chloride in here, and there's gonna be a little bit of like a coordination type thing going on between the zinc chloride. You don't necessarily have to draw this, but this is kind of going on. This oxygen is kind of linking up with this zinc, which is kind of what happens instead of the protonation step. But at that point in time, we enter in our sulfur analog, right? which is just like oxygen, right? Both of these sulfurs have each a lone pair on them. So the sulfur is gonna come in, attack the carbonyl carbon, and we will kick electrons up onto the oxygen. So we get our tetrahedral intermediate right here with the negative charge on the oxygen. And we have all of this stuff still attached to sulfur. And he, the sulfur will have a plus charge on it right there. Okay, so we got this. So at this point in time, we're gonna do a little bit of the, pro we're gonna do the proton shuffle, right? We're gonna protonate this oxygen to make it neutral, and we will deprotonate the sulfur to make it neutral. So remember, we're in an aqueous environment. We have water and hydronium to work with. Um, so I will use hydronium here for this oxygen to get rid of its negative charge, and then I'm gonna use Water is my base up here to help me get that sulfur back to neutral. Okay. So now everybody's neutral. I have no H. And then I have a sulfur with just the alkane piece right over here. All right, so remember, we want to subtract water in this mechanism, right? That's gonna help us drive the reaction forward. So what we'll do is again, it sounds a little redundant, but I'm gonna protonate this up. I'm gonna use another hydronium, and I will protonate this up to be a, well, it'll be OH2 plus, AKA our buddy water. So let me just take this one step forward. I'm gonna take it down here. O, right there is a plus charge now. And it is at this point in time, right? 
that this is ready to leave. I'm going to swing electrons down. I'm going to kick off my good leaving group. That's the minus water step. Here we go. We have something that looks like a carbonyl now. And I don't have to draw that bond. It doesn't matter if you do. I'm just going to leave it like that. I have a plus charge on this sulfur now. So remember, this is kind of like our, um, you know, what would be like our protonated carbonyl analog, but it's this thing right here. It's an activated, this carbon is primed for attack, right? This sulfur is ready to receive some electrons and get that positive charge off of it. So this sulfur is gonna go ahead, I'll draw some blue, attack right here, electrons kick up, and that is how we're gonna get a one, two, three, four, five, um, little ring type structure, right? Exactly what we see in our product. So I have a sulfur here, that's this sulfur. Then I have a carbon off of it, carbon off of there. Down, I have my sulfur right here, which is now attached to this carbon. And then I have that hydrogen, and I have a plus charge on this sulfur. And then water's gonna come around back and do us a big old solid. It's gonna grab that H electrons back onto the sulfur and we get our product right here. And we are happy o -chemers. Okay, so nothing new really. Okay, so, sorry, I lied. A little bit something new. Everything is basically the same in acetal formation, for thioacetal formation, except for the fact that you don't protonate to lead off, right? You have the zinc chloride to kind of, you know, take the place, and it's gonna kind of coordinate with the oxygen. So you just attack straight up. So you have a negative on the oxygen. So really the only difference is that you kind of have to protonate it up to be neutral and then protonate it again to, you know, to be positive. And then, you know, electrons swing down, you drive off water, which is this, this is the irreversible step, right? Oh man, I can't spell. Sorry about that. Irreversible, right? So I technically should be drawing like these arrows right here because this can go back and forth. This is irreversible, it's gonna go the rest of the way. Oop. So uh, yeah, this is acetal, or thioacetal formation. Nothing earth shatteringly different than acetal formation. So what I'm gonna do, gang, is I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. I'm gonna throw up the, uh, you know, the undoing reaction, how we go from a thioacetal back to its ketone analog. And uh, we'll step through that, and then I'll explain why thioacetals are you know, good to use and we'll chug it along. Okay, gang, so now that we went from a carbonyl to the thioacetal, let's run this in reverse. Let's go from a thioacetal and see how it unravels and what we need to do that to get back to a carbonyl. Okay, so, but first I wanna talk a little bit about acid-base stuff because I think it helps understand why it's a different process, even though we have so many similarities between acetals and thioacetals. So recall from Gen Chem, I'm saying throwback o -chem days, right? We did a lot of acid-base stuff. So if we look at H2S and H2O, and I pick us th those two simple acids because, oh, I already drew it. We know that from a periodic table, oxygen and sulfur are in the same family, the same column, right? They have a lot of similar chemical properties. But because they're in the same uh, column, if we were gonna compare these two acids to see which one was stronger, we can do a size comparison. And because we go down a whole energy level from oxygen to sulfur, sulfur atoms are larger than oxygen. So if we look at the conjugate bases here, if I were to subtract off a proton, subtract off a proton, I would get HS minus here, and I would also get you know, OH minus, which we know to be hydroxide. So we know that this process is a better deprotonation, right? We know H2S is stronger because in the corresponding conjugate base, the sulfur atom is larger, the same amount of negative charge has a better opportunity to distribute itself around a larger atom as opposed to the oxygen and hydroxide. So we have the stronger acid here, which means, right, if this is the stronger acid and this is the weakest conjugate base, right, I should say weaker, because we're just comparing two things, weaker, stronger, right? This is the weaker acid, but that means that this conjugate base is stronger, 
I'm not saying it's a strong conjugate base outright, I'm just saying it's stronger. So oxygen is a little bit more basic than sulfur, which is why when we want to unravel an acetal, we pump water and H2O back in, right? Because water's a little bit more basic, it gets permeated more easily, right? And then we can do the whole chain of events. Things are a little bit different with sulfur, which is why it's not just as simple, right, over this arrow as pumping acid and water back in. Obviously we need water because we need to introduce a carbonyl back in, but we need a little bit more pizzazz. We need something else, okay? And what it will be is this uh, mercuric chloride, right? Okay, so let's do the mechanism. So, first step. This thioacetal is gonna see this mercuric chloride, right? Mercury's bonded to two chlorines, right? Electronegative atoms, so this chlor uh, mercury atom has a partial positive charge on it. Sulfur sees that. Sulfur's all about that. Sulfur wants to get involved. So sulfur's gonna go ahead and bond to the mercury atom, which is going to go ahead and kick off a Cl, which is fine, right? Because we know Cl minus, it's chill, it's stable, right? It can, uh, it's a good leaving group. So, I didn't touch this side of the molecule at all. This sulfur has a bond to a mercury atom, which is still bonded to one chlorine. And because we made a bond from sulfur, we have a plus charge on sulfur. Okay, so we're kind of just doing things in reverse, right? Just like we would do with an acetal. So I want, I'm gonna have this bond break because I'm gonna have these electrons swing down to reform, right, a sulfur uh, a carbon double bond, which means this bond has to break up there, kick up back on the sulfur, which is good because that alleviates the positive charge on sulfur. So, double bond, sulfur, I got my carbon, 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 sulfur, H, G, C, L, right? Just draw it as best you can, right? Oh, and I have a plus charge on this sulfur right here. I want to pair. Okay, so at this point, right, we almost have like an activated carbonyl carbon type scenario, right? Here's where water shows up. Here's where we get our oxygen character back in the molecule. We attack the activated carbon. Electrons kick up on sulfur, which is good, right? Because that means that's gonna alleviate the positive charge on sulfur. So now I have an OH with two hydrogens on it. And then I have a sulfur, two carbons, a sulfur, and then this HG. CL, okay? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, so I need to do like a proton shuffle type of step, right? And that's very obvious for the oxygen, right? I'm just gonna recruit another water. It's gonna deprot deprotonate that hydrogen, or sorry, it's gonna grab the proton, which allows those electrons to flow back into oxygen. But we're not gonna do that with sulfur, right? Because remember, that's not, that's not sulfur style, right? We're a little less basic with sulfur. So what sulfur will actually do is he's gonna join this party and finally bond to this mercury, which is going to kick off that extra chlorine. So if we take this to the next step, right, we have an OH. That part was a little bit easier to digest, but think about this, right? We still have sulfur directly attached to this carbon right here, but now we have a cyclic structure. We have like a one, two, three, four, five type thing going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. One, so one, two, three, four, five, that being mercury, and four was sulfur, so I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this and stick a sulfur back there. Kind of cheated a little bit. But that functioned to put a positive charge on sulfur. That was like our deep protonation step, if you will. So we are primed for oxygen to have electrons swing down, make a double bond, and now we can completely eject this whole sulfur nonsense. So we get almost our complete carbonyl carbon back. We'll just have another water come in to just do some cleanup. That gives us this. But I also want to highlight why we even did all this in the first, like where, where did mercury come in? Why does that help? This is a precipitate. So this is like our, we're gonna even throw it back farther to our chemical careers. 
you know, in Gen Chem, maybe even in high school or AP or, you know, Gen Chem one or two, right? This is a precipitate. That's our driving force for this reaction. This will fall out of solution. Okay. So that is unwrap going from a thioacetal back to its carbonyl analog. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this crud. And I want to talk, gang, about why thioacetals are important. Where might you find yourself employing them and having sulfur have your back? So give me one second, I'll erase this, and we'll get ourselves an answer. Okay, gang, so I just want to do a quick example to kind of illustrate where thioacetals can help you out in like a synthetic situation, or maybe even a mechanism, but basically why you would ever reach for one, right? Okay, so let's just say you needed to provide the steps from this starting material to this product, right? So basically, we're only going from, you know, we have two aldehydes, and we're just seemingly going to oxidize this, um, the one aldehyde up to a carboxylic acid, right? So what is the best way we can do this? So in my mind, the best way we can do this is if we can somehow protect, so this is symmetrical, right? So if we can just protect one of the aldehydes, then oxidize, and then deprotect, I feel like that would be the best way to accomplish, you know, this reaction, right? So what I know to go from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid is the Jones reaction. I know this isn't, you know, green chemistry, but, you know, we would use sodium dichromate and H2SO4, right? So this is an aqueous environment, which means water and acid, right? So the Jones reaction would, if we had an acetal around, it would undo it, right? Because that's, that's, those are the conditions we need to undo an acetal is water and acid. So this is where an acetal would be perfect to, you know, deploy to help you out because acetals or thioacetals, as we just saw, aren't undone by water and acid, right? We know we need that mercure chloride right there. And even base, base doesn't undo, the, undo them either. It's mercure chloride and water. So what I think would be nice, quick, and dirty would be if you do something like, here, I'm going to just... I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I don't wanna redraw this. I would say, let's go down like this. And over this arrow, I'm gonna throw in my acetal, which I know is this. I need my zinc chloride, okay? That's the bare minimum. Some other people, you know, some people include some more stuff, but these for sure are what you will need. So this, and I would say, I would even say one equivalent. So pick your favorite end. I'm just gonna do it like how the drawing is. I'm gonna make this my thioacetal. And then I have this thing going on, right? And this is just a hydrogen. We don't have to draw it, but I'm gonna draw it because it looks a little weird if I don't. So at this point, then I can do my Jones reaction. Na2Cr2O7, H2SO4. That's gonna selectively oxidize only my carbonyl on the end. And it's not going to ruin my thioacetal. If I had an acetal, it would unravel it and probably oxidize it because there's a, probably enough water, acid, and everything oxidizing agent to go around. And then all I oh didn't even draw the point of that reaction. There we go. Then all I need to do is un, undo my thioacetal, right? Uh, which is just going to be my mercury chloride, my water. Some people also like to include. Uh, Calcium carbonate as a weak base to help out with proton transfer as well as I think the, uh, CH3CN as a solvent. This is what you for sure need though, the stars of the show. But again, this is how thioacetals can make your life a little easier, right? Because acetals can't fit the bill here. It's right here, it would break down because your thioacetal would unravel because those we have the conditions here to do that. Doesn't seem like water and acid are there, but remember. This is an aqueous environment, which means this. So we talked about how to make acetals, right? How to unravel them and why they're important. So slightly different than acetals, not so much, but now you know both. Okay, gang, thank you for tuning in for another episode. Uh, whether you're watching me from YouTube or my website, make sure to follow Joe Chem on Facebook, Joe Chemio, uh, Instagram, Joe Chem underscore IO, subscribe on YouTube. Um, but thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.